it's Friday, and you know what that means. It's time for the Unhappy Hour live sports radio show on the new American Media.com. Here is your host, Brian Engelman. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Thank you very much for sticking around. We definitely want to thank Zach Barris for participating in the program. If you're listening on YouTube, make sure you click that little subscribe button because then you get updated when we put all of our new content up there. Scroll around for some new topics that look interesting and play and tell your friends. Please, we appreciate that. But this is an interactive show. If you feel like you want to join the program and talk with us for a little bit about the Indians, the Cavs, the Browns, or the Buckeyes, or any national sports matters, we are looking for people to assist us, to collaborate with us, to co-host with us, to talk sports. Bring your friends in. Invite them to send direct messages. This is an interactive platform here. Okay? Now that we have that clear, I want to ask you for one more thing. Go on Twitter and go to American underscore media underscore and follow us on Twitter because that's where we do a lot of our communication. You know, the the website's fine, but it doesn't get updated nearly as much (laughs) as Twitter. Twitter updates every 10 seconds, and we're always tweeting interesting stories out there. I want to give you this one real quick. Yes, LeBron had a beer thrown at him. Heat versus Celtics. Go online, take a look. It's on YouTube. You know, and and it's it's one thing to toss a beer on somebody after a game. Eh, you know, I mean, they used to throw snowballs and batteries and rocks and stuff at John Elway in, in the old dog pound in Cleveland. Okay, not a good idea. Um, the only thing I don't like about this is that it, it paints LeBron as a sympathetic character. I mean, I mean, the whole. Du- I also don't like the dumping a beer on somebody. It's not like throwing a battery at someone that could. Remember when the NFL ref threw the the beanbag at. Orlando, oh, who was it? Orlando Brown on the Cleveland Browns lineman hit him in the eye, and he had to retire from the league. That was horrible. But you know, th- there's something else. I saw this LeBron thing, and I saw the beer get thrown on him, and it's like, oh, you know, that doesn't look good if you're one of the Celtics fans. You know, that's that's not that's not good. Um, but this is a little different. A man has admitted to the beating of Brian Stowe. I want to tell you about this real quick. A man was ordered Friday to stand trial for the beating of a San Francisco Giants fan at Dodgers Stadium. He admitted in a jailhouse conversation that he attacked the man according to a transcript of the recording. Transcript of the talk between Luis Sanchez, 30, and co-defendant Marvin Norwood, 31, was released after a preliminary hearing where both men were ordered to stand trial on charges of mayhem, assault, and battery in the 2001 attack on Brian Stowe. The men spoke after they had appeared in a lineup. So Sanchez was recorded saying that he got mad at the Giants fan for making derogatory comments to his sister. I socked him, jumped in, and started beating him. The transcript quoted him as saying. He was heard apologizing to Norwood for dragging him into the situation, but Norwood said he wouldn't have felt like a man if he hadn't stepped in to help Sanchez. Okay. So this guy, Brian Stowe, was beaten really bad. He was beaten really bad. Brian Stowe. B-R-Y-A-N Stowe. If you're not familiar with this story, do a Google search or go to startpage.com. That's what we use for our search engine. Um, Go to startpage.com and do a Brian Stowe beating um, search and and look up this story because, you know, it's one thing to throw a beer on somebody. It's another thing to cold cock someone and then kick him in the head and put him in a coma. Pretty much ruin his life. Um, And then there's another thing to root for somebody to fail or at least to root against the other team to succeed so you know you got to be careful in rooting in sports or politics or anything to avoid the hate so there's a fine line sometimes between rooting for someone to get beaten by someone else who succeeds and rooting for someone to get beaten by your friend because you wouldn't feel like a man unless you kicked this guy in the head once you knocked him out with one punch his head hit the concrete and reverberated and uh, uh, the, the, the thud sound that can only be heard when someone's knocked out cold and the, the skull hits the concrete and then kick him in his unconscious head until you put him in a coma in the hospital. There's a big difference between throwing a beer on someone, rooting for someone to fail, like we do with LeBron. We root for the Celtics to win because we just don't want to see the way he played us as Cleveland fans. And I got one goal, and that's to win a championship in Cleveland, and I'm not going to stop until we get it. I understand the unique nature of Cleveland sports, and, and it's my job to bring a championship, and I'm not going to stop until we bring it. That's what he said. You know, we, we took those words seriously because we've been through so much. Without further ado, we're going to bring in Brandon to talk some sports. Brandon and I were longtime co-hosts of radio in college. Hello. 
Brandon, you are live on the air, and as usual, your phone is probably a little hot, a little loud, so if you could just pull back from it just a little bit. It's good to talk to you. I haven't heard from you in a little bit. How, how are things? Uh, things are going very well. Is that uh, volume a little bit better? That is fantastic. We certainly appreciate it. And the way that our YouTube viewership is is going, they'll appreciate it too because we're, we're getting probably about 300 hits a day on our YouTube channel. Um, we just hit about 109 subscribers, and we've only started promoting it. So your information here, our segment is going to be spread around a little bit. So, yeah, thank you for joining us oh, today. Outstanding. Good to hear, Brian. Indeed. Hear well, so. Well, let, let, we haven't had any time to do any show prep, you and I, but you are the longtime co-host of the B&B radio show, the, the world-renowned, acclaimed B&B radio show at Bowling Green State University with Brian and Brandon, including the Wake Up Show with Brian and Brandon and Murray. Um, so you're a Cleveland sports fan. You said you wanted to chat today. You had a, little, a couple of minutes. What's on your mind? Are you thinking NBA, thinking OTAs? Are you thinking Buckeyes? Are you thinking Indians? Where do you want to go? Well, that's all well and good, but uh, something first else. Of all, uh, really? uh, well, um, did uh, uh, did you get uh, uh, a wind of uh, of your hometown making national news this week? Oh yeah, you're talking about the the, the commencement night crash, I believe, in Brunswick, Ohio. Is that what you're referencing? That is absolutely what I am referencing. Did that just uh, send some chills down your spine a little bit? Yeah, I, you know, I've I've seen a, a little bit of information. What can you tell the listeners? What it was commencement night, right, in Brunswick? Uh, yeah, and uh, basically you had um, uh, a cut. Well, it's it was the night before. Okay. And uh, they apparently had gone to Cedar Point during the day, and yeah. uh, were coming home from that. And uh, there were, I believe, five of them in the car, and uh, pretty much. Uh, Generally speaking, it seems that speed was a factor and that they were maybe trying to jump some railroad tracks. And um, uh, basically, when they jumped them, when they hit the ground, apparently uh, the driver lost control of the vehicle and uh, and uh, crashed into a ditch. And uh, oh. I believe that uh, four, four of the five people in the car were, were killed. Yeah, well, thank you for bringing that ray of sunshine to it. No, I, I've I've gotten reports because, as you know, Brandon, um, <clears throat> I I was put in the hospital on commencement night. It, it was uh, my my best friend Justin and I were riding in a car with another girl who had not been drinking, and she just stopped at a intersection and kind of out in the middle of the country where it's 55 miles an hour, and we were in a Geo Metro hatchback convertible, um, and the well not a convertible little geo metro hatchback but we pulled out inexplicably through this red light and we got creamed by a ford f-150 extended cab doing 55 65 miles an hour coming up from from the country and we just got bent into a v and we we landed in between a ditch and a telephone pole so yeah i got all the reports from some of my friends my family and and from justin he's like remind you of anything and yeah pretty tough time right now because I mean, thank God, all three of us were mostly okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, tough times in Brunswick right now around commencement time. So I guess yeah. we, we can all I say mean, our it, individual prayer, however we choose to, to whatever God we choose to pray to. But I think we could all stop and take a second to send our love to those people killed in that crash in Brunswick. Some tough times, that's for sure, especially the day before commencement. So, um, but uh, but either way, uh, certainly a uh, you know something it always uh, makes you raise your eyebrows a little bit when you see your hometown on uh, yeah you know the the front page of MSN yeah that's usually that's usually not a good thing you know it's not like oh we we just innovated this new thing We're, we we've developed sp uh, time travel in Brunswick Ohio we became super Brunswick yeah yeah we we've we've established a colony on Venus says Parma uh, Mayor. Joe so and so, <laughs> uh, Dean DePietro, I think. Good for you for knowing that. No, but uh, well, mo Piro, Piro. moving away from the tragedy here. I know because listeners, Brandon and I go back. We did about three and a half years of college radio, and uh, sometimes the the work weeks are just busy and hectic, and we we do our catching up on the air. So you know, like I like like we just said, you know, if if you have a second to look up that story or just say a silent prayer to whatever God you choose to 
uh, say your prayers to if you do. Uh, you know, there, there are quite a few families and friends out there that are going through some grief right now. So uh, not thank you for mentioning that because that means you had to mention it, um, meaning it had to happen. But, yes, that is a good point, and I, I will take that minute to say a prayer for them. So that is and, that. And, uh, you know, besides that, uh, I guess if you want to switch gears uh, – uh, so, uh, have you been uh, talking uh, anything at all about the uh, the Browns OTAs? Okay, perfect. The answer is no, and let me let me tell you why. We we have a couple of good guests, um, especially Zach Barris. He's from the Cleveland area, and he's an NBA scout, and he lives out here in Los Angeles. But he was just on. He was at the NBA Combine this this past weekend and so we were talking a lot of nba a lot of lebron versus kevin garnett versus kevin durant like the situations leaving with their team or resigning with their team so we, we've been pretty nba heavy with him over the past couple weeks he's been a co-host and then uh with jackie that sports babe taylor she's also affiliated with the nba so we've been talking a lot of basketball and i am eager for some football brother what's going on Let, let's get an update from brown's otas uh, I mean, uh, basically everything that uh, we're hearing is, is good uh, coming out of uh, training camp as far as uh, the, um, the, the, the general um, first impressions that the uh, local uh, Cleveland media has gotten about Brandon Whedon have been all positive. Um, you know, he's saying the right things. Uh, you know, he's making mistakes in, in June minicamp, which, uh, you know, is about the same thing as being the uh, best kickboxer in Luxembourg or something like that. So, uh, you know, it's not something that you really can <laughs> You don't really concern yourself with it a whole lot. Yeah, this is the so, time to uh, make mistakes. You know, not the NBA right. Finals or the Super Bowl or the playoffs. Playoffs? Yeah. So anyway, uh, you know, you, you, but uh, so far uh, he's certainly shown the ability to make some passes that uh, the Browns have not been able to make in, uh, in, in, well, since Derek Anderson and realistically speaking since Bernie Kozo because he can actually throw the darts that Anderson could throw but also has uh, some excellent touch on his short to intermediate routes, which is something that uh, – we have not had with, uh, you know, uh, we haven't had the combination of both. Okay, we're, t we're talking live with Cleveland sports enthusiast and former co-host of the B&B radio show, Brandon Odell. Brandon, uh, all right, so I was really salty with this, this pick. You know, I did not care for the Brandon Whedon pick. Now if that's the case, it's like, look, Holmgren deserves the right to put his stamp on this franchise. He's, his, his job is going to be up. Um, you know, he's going to be on the hot seat if they don't perform. So if he wants to pick a quarterback, you know, let him get his quarterback because now he's on the clock. There's no more excuse. You know, it's kind of like the, the blame Bush thing in politics. It's like at a certain point, you got to own this. And Holmgren now, he's going into what, season three? One with Mangini, two with Shermer. And now's the time for him to, to deliver some results. No blaming the past administration. It's all on Holmgren. So if it was his choice to get Heckert to draft Whedon, you got to say, hey, this is your your string. You know, go for it. Just be careful with it, because this is your job on the line now. How do you feel about the Brandon Whedon pick? Um, and, and did you feel differently than me? I just didn't like it at first. Uh, I mean, no. I mean, I always liked it. Uh, I I basically figured, you know, if there were certain things that they wanted to make sure that they got, no matter what, uh, might as well go ahead and get them. Right. And uh, and and I think that's what they did. So uh, no, I don't fault him for that, and uh, and uh, apparently this uh, Jeff Sch or, uh, Jeff Schwartz, Jeff Schwartz is his brother, uh, Mitchell Schwartz, the uh, right tackle that we got in the second round. His brother Jeff Schwartz is a starting guard for I believe the Vikings. Okay. Uh, but uh, this guy is just supposed to be massive and uh, has uh, been very impressive in training camp so far. So now you got Joe Thomas on the left tackle. You got Mitchell Schwartz on the right tackle. You got uh, uh, Alex Mack thank in the you. middle. Alex Mack in the middle. And you got Trent Richardson to hand the ball off to. Like, what are you expecting to see? I heard that Whedon likes playing long toss with that kid from Miami that's really, really small and really, really fast. Travis Benjamin, and yes, uh, that has been something else that uh, uh, a lot of people are talking about right now. Um, another name to 
keep in mind that uh, is being thrown around a little bit is uh, the undrafted free agent, uh, a la Josh Cribbs. Uh, he is uh, his name is um, uh, Josh Cooper, and uh, he was picked up. Uh, he was actually uh, Brandon Whedon's number two. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, apparently he's been uh, turning a lot of heads and, uh, you know, looks like a very solid uh, Kevin Johnson type of receiver. Joe Juravicious type? No, doesn't have that size. Like I said, think more of, uh, you know, the first few years the Browns were back, uh, Kevin Johnson, you know, very solid number – you know, was a number one for us, but a very solid, uh, you know, number two or number three, I right. guess, is uh, what they see him. A guy uh, with skill, a, a guy with skill and camaraderie. We were talking with Zach Barris a minute ago about um, Kyrie Irving um, and, and the fact that his high school teammate might be available to join the Cavs at number four when they pick. So, you know, all that camaraderie and all those years spent playing together, that might play a big role in success on the field because you got years of practice put in. You know, you have a built-in comfort zone where that could happen. So, I mean, do, do you think – I mean, l l let's talk about the wide receiver because you're, you're talking about the, the number two from Oklahoma. Um, if you want to talk about him, if you want to talk about um, – any of the other guys, the, the speedster out of Miami, because Justin Blackman just got busted for a DUI. So, in a way, it's like, man, thankfully we didn't get that kid. His head's not screwed on right. Mm-hmm. You know? So, well, you know, either way, uh, things are definitely uh, looking uh, very good right now. Um, and uh, it's certainly, uh, you know, but it's the pre It's not even the preseason. Right. It's uh, the preseason preseason. pre pre preseason so, uh, so uh, anyway, uh, but uh, but things are looking good so far, and uh, you know it's certainly uh, you know uh, every uh, every summer uh, right around this time, all Browns fans suddenly uh, get that itch again, and uh, and and I'm certainly getting it myself. So um, all NFL fans are getting that itch right, right about now, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, is it too early to make a prediction? Because, Brandon, you know my prediction every single year. You can say it or I can say it, but my prediction is the same every single year. Um, is it too early for you to make a pre-pre-preseason prediction as far as record goes? And do you want to recap what you what you think I'm going to say for my prediction? Well, you're going to say 16-0 and 0 because you're the uh, quote-unquote eternal optimist trapped in the, <laughs> the shell of a pessimist. Um <laughs> But uh, yes, I would right. uh, I, I would say that uh, I it, any any Browns fan would take an eight and eight uh, season. So and that right um, tackle, if that if that gets shored up, that's going to be huge because that was such that, a problem. He he wears a size eighteen shoe. Yikes, Frankenstein. So yeah, a very large man. So anyway, that is uh, my prediction, uh, and uh, and I'm sticking to it. So. Uh, I'll tell you what, Brian, uh, it was great getting a chance to, to be on your show, um, and uh, I'm going to have to uh, uh, let you go. Perfect. Brandon, are you on Twitter yet, if anyone wants to follow what you're up to, or you haven't gone that route yet? No, I don't think you'll be uh, seeing me on Twitter, but, uh, you know, um, if uh, – I. I guess uh, they they can always Twitter you, and uh, you can let me know about it. How about that? Okay, so so on Twitter they do at. What would your handle be? What what would what would what would they tweet? What would be hashtag what? What do you go by? Uh, you Brisha know, B. Um, the, the, all all that's doing is just confusing the public, so I'm not even <laughs> going to go that far. All right, Brandon, send send your best and all of our love to to your family, and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you again soon. All right, because because by the way, our fantasy baseball league, we got to get back on track with that. We got to see how we're all doing, but that's another conversation for another day. <laughs> Sounds great. All right, take care, Brandon. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye. All right, yeah, that's that's Brandon. Just and and that's the point here. This is a this is supposed to be, and it is a back and forth conversation here at the New American Media. You know, obviously we have conversations with Brandon who's done our radio shows before. We love Brandon. You know, he's he's a big Browns, Buckeyes, Cavs and Indians fan, huge. Big national sports fan as well. I mean, he and I have done three and a half years of radio when we were college roommates, so I mean, we've had all the pleasant sports conversations and all of the knockdown, drag out political, spiritual, economic conversations that you could have. 
in some ways he and I could not be further apart politically sometimes spiritually not really but just you know differences you know and that's part of what we try to do here we try to mix the sports with the politics economics spirituality etc you know because it's like at the end of the day it's 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 hard keeping friends you know it's hard getting friends it's hard having friends that are worth a damn and it's hard to keep in touch with them and that's kind of what we want to do here it, this is called the unhappy hour live cleveland sports show it's a cleveland centric los angeles based sports show yeah we're still working on the name but it's called the unhappy hour and it's like a bar you know it's, it's happy hour come on in as cleveland fans it's unhappy because the indians the Cavs, the browns they all they have never provided me a championship in my lifetime and I'm getting tired of it. You know, I'd really like to see somebody bring home a trophy. That'd be great for civic pride. You know, because those are my roots. I, I do care about that. I, I, I'm a Los Angelino. I'm a Californian, and I have been for seven years, but those are my roots over there. You know, and it's it's hard to keep your friends when you're, when you're living on the other side of the coast. You know, when you're 2,000 miles away, it's hard. So we envision, envision this as a large internet pool table, a large internet bar, a sports bar. Yeah, you go get go get some wings, sit down, grab a beer, you know, have have a beverage of your choice. It's the unhappy hour, the un call it the happy hour, whatever. It's the unhappy hour, and we're gonna talk. We're gonna catch up on things, see how things are going. I mean, we talked for <clears throat> five minutes about a tragedy in Brunswick, my hometown, in Ohio, where some kids were killed the day before their commencement, and you know, tough times. Our prayers do go out over there, you know. And if, and if you're not familiar, just think of the parents, think of the friends, think of the girlfriends and boyfriends, think of the, just think of the school, think of, think of anyone you've lost. So, you know, if, if you have a second, take, take a second, you know, press pause if you're, if you're on YouTube or, um, wa you know, watching this after the fact, listening to this after the fact, or if you're listening live, just think about it today. You know, our, our good friend and producer from Bowling Green, Ohio, where I did the radio show with Brandon, uh, Sean Flynn. He, he was the, the, the producer, the engineer, and the co-host of The Unhappy Hour. And he passed away in December in a motorcycle crash on the PCH, not too far from where Lindsay Lohan just crashed on the PCH up near Malibu. I haven't really seen exactly. You know, but that was, that was my pretty much my best friend out here in California, and he, he died in December. You know, he was my teammate here on this radio show. You know, I'm... I'm what is it? I'm going rogue. I'm going off script. You know, you, you look at Obama. Obama had something. He said the private sector is doing fine. In, in, in a quick news conference today, he went off script and he said something he later came back and clarified and completely changed his mind on. But, you know, I'm going to go off script. But <clears throat> and not that I'm even really on script, but I kind of have an idea of how things are going. But that's that's the beauty and the tragedy of when you do your own show. You get to go over. You get to run segments late. You get to cut things off. You get to edit things, whatever. But, you know, I, I lost, you know, my best friend out here in California in a motorcycle crash, dead at, what was he, 20, 29 years old? You know, so, I mean, think of these 18, 17, 18-year-old kids, you know, four or five of them getting killed in, in Brunswick, Ohio, in your hometown. It's... It gives you pause. It makes you just take a second and say a prayer to the God that you acknowledge created this experience. However you choose to define it. You know, that, and we'll get into this in a minute. That's what bothers me about that Rick Santorum guy, and I'm so glad he's out. It's like, I don't know who I was rooting for to be out more. I don't know if I was rooting against LeBron James and the Miami Heat to get eliminated more than I was rooting for Rick Santorum to get eliminated in the primaries. It's a good question. I, I don't... <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I don't know. I don't know who I... I don't want to say loathed, because that's a pretty harsh word. But I don't know who... I, maybe loathed, really. I know that, that's just very interesting, because I could not wait for Rick Santorum to leave. But that's his thing. He's oh, I'm social conservative. I'm, I'm so, so conservative. And it's like, this country isn't conservative. It's not liberal. It's libertarian. It's do your own thing. Just don't bother somebody else. Don't break their leg or pick their pocket in the meantime but do your thing that's what america is it's not your conservative values being forced down other people's throats you know you got to go libertarian on the social stuff because we got important issues to worry about you know and it it's just you got to think about what's important and, and you realize you know if, if your friend at 29 years old your, your your teammate doing the radio show for you know, and we have these shows archived. If it, if you're watching on YouTube, we don't have our shows with Sean Flynn, but he's a good producer. He was great. He kept me on time. Tell you what, he kept me on time. He, he would always say, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. 
all right, we're going to commercial. He'd, he'd line up the callers. That, that's why we have it where the calls go through because I'm, I'm doing all this stuff now. You know, I, I'm, I'm doing two jobs, probably three or four jobs at once. But whatever. You know, th- there's no excuses. You know, l- like LeBron, you can't blame everybody else but yourself or even yourself if you play great. <clears throat> you just do the best that you can. And, and that's the point. You just got to do the best that you can. And so that's why we've continued this show since Sean's passing in December. Um, we hadn't worked on the show since uh, maybe it was right after Occupy LA. It was maybe August or September. We took some time off, you know. And it's just you got to do what you can do when you can do it. You know, you got to seize that opportunity. You look at the Oklahoma City Thunder, and you got to you got to get that championship while you can. There's no guarantee you could be here next year. There could be a significant injury. There could be a labor dispute. You could, you could be on strike next year. You can't count on tomorrow. That's my point. You just got to focus on today. So, I mean, Brandon, that what was important to me today is to talk to Brandon because it had been a couple weeks since I talked to him. You know, and what's important now is to take that, that second of prayer to whatever you deem to be your spiritual guide, so long as it's not violent or criminal, you know. That's what got me thinking about Rick Santorum because he's in the news. We're going to talk about it on Agree to Disagree because, you know, he, he's talking about a, a fight with the Ron Paul delegates. You know, and, and I, th- I think he's trying to put some conservative political action group together to. It's like, come on, man. You know, make your own choice. Make your own personal social choice. And don't, don't, don't bother people in the meantime. You know, so whatever God you choose to take a second and have a meditative moment, have a prayer with, say something out loud, say something quietly, whatever it is. And if it's nothing, so be it. But just just think about those families. They they could I, I I firmly believe in the power of focused intention. You know, that once again another agree to disagree topic where we get into spirituality and esoteric ancient history and what other civilizations may or may not have participated in and or known. These are concepts and thoughts that really intrigue me. But I believe in the in in the the concept of, of focused intention. You know, call it a prayer, call it a meditation, call it just you know, sending a card, sending some flowers, just just saying a quick prayer. You know, at the end of the day, some of these things really might add up, and I think that they do. So Brandon brought that to our attention, so we brought it to yours, and that's what we're asking for here. You know, we want this to be a back and forth conversation. We know that you're out there listening. We know that over 300 people are finding our YouTube page every single day. I mean, at least you know, some days more, some days less. Um, but we've been doing this for a year. We do sports, we do spirituality, we do, you know, 1984 style government intrusion and corporate intrusion stuff. We get into damn near any topic you can imagine. So if there's anything that you care about, there are ways to contact us. So one of the ways you can do that is send us a direct message on Twitter. If you go to American underscore media underscore, send us a direct message. We'll get your message right now. And we know you're out there listening, and we'll get it right now. And if you want to join the program and talk, we'll connect you with our Skype line. We, we, we open it up as soon as we're ready to take our calls. We have a Skype line, TNAM Radio, as in the new American media, TNAM Radio. That's another way you can find us. You know, and we, we would invite you into this conversation as well. We want to have a back-and-forth conversation here. You know, think of it less as, hey, I wonder what Brian's talking about today. What are they talking about on Agree to Disagree? I wonder who the guest is on the happy hour, on happy hour. I wonder what Brian's going to say about LeBron James again. Is he ever going to get over it? Nah, well, you know, th- th- there's a time for that, and then there's also a time to bring you in. You know, we want to get your thoughts. So please do so. Subscribe to the YouTube page. Uh, like us on Facebook. Find us on Twitter at American underscore media underscore. Sign up with us on Skype, and then we can call the live Skype line and bring you in. Uh, it, it, it's just our network is expanding because it's, it's really time to, to do more because we don't have tomorrow. All we have is today. We don't have next year. We have this month. We don't have this month. We have this week. We don't have this week. We have today. You know, it, j- just think about it. You know, we're, we're $16 trillion in debt. We got to fix that. You know, Let, let's not worry about whose version of God you're worshiping, Rick Santorum. Please, please do that in your personal life. Do that in your, in your social groups. D- d- seek out the thing you like, but stay out of my face with it, all right? I- I'm just not a fan. I'm just not a fan. Don't do that. You know, there are there are important things. There are people dying on the day before commencement night, and there are things that we can, you know, just bring it all home. Bring it all home. And we don't need to fight each other over Republican and Democrat, because frankly, most people we talk to are saying that they... 
They don't. They don't. They, they think it's a one-party system. It's a rigged oligarchy where they win and all of us lose. The 99% lose. And I say that not as a 99 percenter necessarily. I say that as a guy that realizes and recognizes in a fair system, we would all be able to compete. I also realize this isn't a fair world or fair planet. But look, all we're asking for is equal opportunity. And we're not asking, we're demanding. It's in the Constitution. Stay out of our personal lives, let us make our own decisions, let us protect ourselves, we can say whatever we want, we have certain protections and provisions. It's a charter of negative liberties. It's all the stuff the government cannot do. You know, so when they go out of bounds doing all the things that they've been doing, you know, we gotta talk about it. We gotta talk about Kelly Thomas. Do you know who Kelly Thomas is? Go to startpage.com. I use that instead of Google. It doesn't track your IP address. Startpage.com. And do a search on Kelly Thomas. K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-O-M-A-S. Yeah, he was, he was a homeless man beaten to death by cops. By this, by this fat cop. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to calm down. Gather my words here. I probably almost called him what he was instead of what I'm allowed to call him. It's the internet. I can say whatever the hell I want. But I'm still trying to portray a certain amount of professionalism here. But this fat cop put on latex gloves and says, you see these fists? Kelly Thomas says, yes. The fat cop says, they're getting ready to F you up. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here because, I once again, I'm trying to use some decorum. And then they proceed to beat and kill this guy. You, know, you could have easily slapped handcuffs on him taking him off, he, he has some mental issues, you, whatever, you do the thing. He's sitting there on the ground, you're giving him conflicting orders, cross his legs, put his legs out, put his hands on his knees, and you're putting on latex gloves, relishing the fact that I'm going to get to beat the cr- snot out of this guy. And you kill him. Good job. Good job, Fullerton Police. We appreciate that. Thanks, Fullerton Police. The Fullerton City Council will soon have three new members, the result of a successful recall effort that ousted a trio of councilmen who were thrust into the national spotlight after the death of schizophrenic transient Kelly Thomas at the hands of police. This is from Wednesday, June 6, 2012. About two-thirds of voters supported the effort to oust Councilman Don Bankhead, Pat McKinley, and Frederick Richard Jones. The recall had its roots, roots in last July's death of... T- Kelly Thomas, who got into a violent confrontation with police at the Fullerton Transportation Center and was hospitalized for five days before being taken off of life support. Thomas's death sparked national news coverage, with two officers being the first in Orange County history to be charged with second-degree murder and manslaughter in connection with the arrest. Think about that. Tell me what's important. You know, forcing your, your religious views down the throats of other people or worrying about the people we're paying to protect and serve. You know, this isn't a military state. This is not a prison planet like Alex Jones. I mean, unfortunately, some aspects of this existence, this experience, are becoming militarized and, frankly, fashioned out of a 1984 George Orwell novel, which I am resisting. And I'm sure that's why you're coming here as well, because you're resisting it too. Because that's unconstitutional. That's un-American. We did not flee the king and Britain and the crown and and, and the church to put up with this crap here. You know, you had for seven years people fighting in the snow, bloody feet, no shoes, eating bark off of trees, fighting for some freedom and liberty. Liberty means the right to govern yourself. You know, we don't pay police to put us in a state of perpetual fear and go out and kill homeless people with glee. Putting on latex gloves and killing sorry Um, that is cause for revolt you know these people work for us we are the boss we get to hire and fire the city councilmen, the police officers we put those in jail that are stealing from us whether it's a bank that's causing the devaluation of the US currency which is stealing from our parents and grandparents and you know that it is it's theft. That's that's serious stuff. That's treasonous. That's traitorous. That is criminal activity. What else do you want to talk about? The Florida voting purge? They're trying to get tens of thousands of dead people off of the voting rolls. And Eric Holder is a, a, a causing 
resistance. He doesn't want to get thousands, tens of thousands of dead people off of the voting rolls. Why is that? Is the Department of Justice someone that works for us? Or do they think they're some oligarch, king or queen or pope? Well, not to bring that into it, because that's something different. I don't necessarily mean that. A spiritual leader, a king or queen, a dictator that we have to listen to. Eric Holder works at our behest. You know, I'm, I'm hearing, oh, well, if, if, if they go after the, these voting rolls in Florida, it's going to disenfranchise. <clears throat> who's who's, who's going to get disenfranchised? Who doesn't have an ID? You can't rent a car. <laughs> you can't sign up for a Netflix account. <clears throat> can't have a credit card. Can't get a driver's license. Can't go through a background check. Can't. I mean, there's a hunt. You can't fly. You can't open a bank account. There are, are literally thousands of things you cannot do with an ID. What, what in the world would be the problem with producing your ID to vote? There was a video on YouTube, <clears throat> and I'm putting this all out here so you can take it where you want to take it. But there's a video on YouTube where somebody goes to the polling place of Eric Holder, Department of Justice, Attorney General, Eric Holder, the, the number one crime guy in the Obama cabinet. This guy goes and says, I would like the, the Eric Holder voting ballot. This person never claimed to be Eric Holder, which is good because they've protected themselves that way because they're not doing voter fraud themselves. They're just saying, I would like this. And that person should say no. They were given Eric Holder's voting card. And this Eric Holder is going to say, there's no voting fraud. Oh, no, no, no. There's no potential for voter fraud here. Really? There's no potential for voting fraud. None. Okay. But your own voting ballot has been given away to somebody else just by asking, let alone a concerted effort to rig an election. This is something that Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Ron Paul, Republicans, conservatives, libertarians, Democrats, liberal, I know I'm repeating myself, whatever, that we should all be able to agree upon. We don't want that. And then President Obama says the economy's in good shape. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You got Eric Holder. Leaking information, by the way. It's being reported that, that information has been leaked. You know, whether whether it's the Osama bin Laden raid, however that thing actually went down, the Hollywood movie made with the information, some of the press conferences and information were le- uh, leaked about the, I think it was the Stuxnet virus with Israel and, and the U.S. against Iran and their nuclear program. There are many accusations. Diane Feinstein Democrat from California is standing up and saying that the breaches of protocol and and the secure information that has been deliberately, intentionally, or sloppily leaked to the press is putting our military and troops in harm's way. Now, when Dianne Feinstein, Democrat from California, has had enough with a Democrat in the office, in the Oval Office, okay, that's starting to tell me something. It's looking more and more with the Fast and Furious case. You know, Fast and Furious where uh, Eric Holder organized this program to take guns and then give them to the bad guys so they could track the guns and then blame the Second Amendment and say we need to restrict the Second Amendment. Remember that guy, the one that Obama picked to be the, the, the number one law enforcement guy in the country while Obama's out signing the National Defense Authorization Act saying that you can be imprisoned for your, the rest of your life on a suspicion for the duration of a conflict? Conflict against what? Conflict against terror. Terror is a thing, not a country. When is it over? It's never over. It's Orwellian. It just continues. Yeah, but, but Obama on New Year's Eve signs the NDAA, which allows you to be black bagged, toss a black bag over your head, pull it closed, toss you in an unmarked van, take you off to some place where you could be tortured somewhere under a suspicion or because you're resisting tyranny. Welcome to America 2012, guys. But hey, Rick Santorum, let's get into those social issues, eh? Let's talk about abortion and gay rights. Got nothing more important going on, Rick Santorum. Seriously, if, if, if I could go the rest of my life without having to mention the name Rick Santorum, you know, or LeBron James for that matter, <laughs> if I could go the rest of my life without ever talking about LeBron James or Rick Santorum, I would be a happy character. You know, you might live in Miami, and you might have voted for Rick Santorum in the primary. You may not be my core demographic here. But then again, you might, because you might have an open mind. And I might still be willing to talk to you about it. But seriously, this country is in such disarray. There's so much stuff going on now. By the way, we got a report. We're going to tell you about it right after this first commercial break, and we're going to bring in Blake Wally with Freedomizer Radio. Blake's a 
uh, one, of, one of our good friends, we've done his radio show. Uh, we have done a, a little bit of a quasi-regular co-hosting gig over at Blog Talk Radio. You can go to, what is it, freedomizerradio.com. And we, we tend to generally go on there on Mondays and do a co-hosting thing. Blake's going to join us in a second. Blake is the one that was at the Nevada caucuses, and he caught on video a paid, they think it's a Romney surrogate, a, a, a useful idiot, as, as these people have been called, um, who was wearing a Ron Paul t-shirt passing out fake Ron Paul delegate forms so people would get tricked into voting for the Romney delegates. Because this is all about delegates. Let, let's remember this. I, I want you to be crystal clear on this. This is about delegates. This nomination process, it's not wrapped up. I, I know you think. You've been told it's wrapped up. You just kind of don't know because there are people saying that none of the delegates are bound to how things are voted on at the state level. It matters who at the state level picks which delegates to go vote for who. Or if the number one candidate doesn't receive the right amount of votes, I think it's 1611. I could have to double check. 1644. I'll have to double check. If they don't get the right amount of votes, they can vote however they wish on the second ballot. Think about that. So you have a situation where this is all about delegates and we're being told that it's over, but it's not over. We just don't know. There, there are some people that, yeah, it's, it's 1144 delegates. Thank you. I just thanked myself. <laughs> That's usually where my producer would, would pull that up, but sorry, I'm, I'm producing the show myself. So thank you, Brian. Hey, no problem. Is that right? Is that right? 1,144 delegates. But Blake was at the Nevada caucus where he caught this on tape. I found him on YouTube. Uh, just one of those nights you, you clickety-clack on YouTube and you spend a few hours doing some research into, you know, Alex Jones, Coast to Coast, David Wilcock, William Henry, uh you know, all, all of these types of things. You just start digging around for more information. And uh, we found Blake, and we invited him onto the program, and he's been a good friend of the show. He's out in Las Vegas. Um, ben with Existential Radio, he's a good friend of the network as well. He broadcasts out of Chicago on Existential, E-X-I-S-1-0, like the number 10, T-I-A-L, Existential.com. Mark Clare with Lions of Liberty. Dan with Panda. Dan brought us something interesting. I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick break here because we're totally off topic, but that's fine. That, that That's fine. We know you're out there listening. We appreciate it. Send us a direct message on Twitter at American underscore media underscore if you want to join the conversation. You know, we're putting a lot of topics out there. You might want to grab one of these or go off in a different direction if you wish. When But what we're going to do when we come back, we're going to tell you a warning because if you have any of these accounts, if, if you're signed up on any of these three services, and it's probably more, but we got to tell you right now that if you have any accounts open with billing and credit card information on these three accounts, it's time to change your password and maybe request a new credit card because you've been hacked. So this is information you need to take, and you need to put it on your Twitter feed. You need to take it. You need to send it to your friends because you got to know someone out there with some of these accounts, and we need to pass the word around quickly and just change your information and put extra di diligence looking at the credit cards and, and, and the, the monthly statements. Keep a real close eye on things because, you know, being $16 trillion in debt and China getting upset with our fiscal policy and the Federal Reserve trying to quantitatively ease slash steal more money from you by devaluing the dollar, you know, the Eurozone collapsing and whatever happens in Greece and Italy and Spain and Germany and all of these things starting to coalesce into a 2012 election that may be unprecedented in, its, in, in terms of just viciousness. Let, let's hope not. Let, let's hope it's just... Let's, let, let, let's, let's hope it's not, but it's time to pay attention to all these things a little bit more. And you're part of the network. You're part of the network here at the New American Media. You know, we, we team up with other radio shows, with other correspondents, and you need to be a part of this. So let us take this quick commercial break. And we're going to be right back with Blake Wally. And when we come back, stick around because we're going to tell you which three services, which three popular internet services may have had their accounts compromised and it might be time to change your password and or change your billing information as well that's up to you i don't use either of these three but i i, I received word from a whistleblower today that we got to pass this information along so we will my name is brian we have officially made the hard pivot 
as we like to say in running back terms. You're going one direction, you plant your foot, and you go in a totally different spot. We've transitioned already from the unhappy hour, Cleveland-centric, Los Angeles-based sports show into Agree to Disagree, the show where you're allowed to talk about anything you're not supposed to talk about inside of a bar. Economics, politics, spirituality, take it where you want to. My name is Brian. This is the NewAmericanMedia.com. Thank you so much for being a part of this today. You are listening to the Unhappy Hour Sports Radio Show on the NewAmericanMedia.com. You are listening to the Agree to Disagree program on the NewAmericanMedia.com. Be sure that you go on to Facebook.com and do a quick search for the New American Media and like our page because we like it when you do that. TNAM Radio, because the news always matters. Hi, Brian from the NewAmericanMedia.com. Last year I had this idea. I wanted to start a website of my own, not just something, a presence on Twitter, a presence on Facebook, and have a thing. I wanted a website. I wanted a home base for all of the ideas and things I'm interested in. I wanted live radio. I wanted to communicate with the globe. I was tired of being spoon-fed dogma by corporate interests and, and just, here, believe this, believe this. I said, no, I, I think there's something underneath the surface, but I didn't know how to do it. So I contacted Ted Distel of DistelDesign.com. Ted walked us through the process of, okay, you want videos, you want to do quotes of the day, you want to have a spiritual section, you want to have a 1984 watch where, where government's intru- intruding and private corporations are intruding into your privacy. Yeah. Yeah, those are the things that I was interested in. Ted, walk me through the process. We built thenewamericanmedia.com, and I encourage you to go online and take a look at our site. That's what he's capable of. Please, if you have an idea, go to distaldesign.com. That's D-I-S-T-E-L design.com. Have you ever considered adopting a pet to be part of your family? Our animal companions can be just as close to us as our human companions. If you're considering adoption, please visit your local shelter and adopt a pet today. Shelter pets make the best pets. Follow the new American Media.com on Twitter at American underscore media underscore. This is the new American Media. Hi, it's Brian from the new American Media.com. I'm a sports fan. I was raised in Cleveland, spent 25 years in Ohio. I watched the drive, the fumble, the shot. The shot, too. I watched Art Modell steal the Cleveland Browns and win a Super Bowl over in Baltimore. I watched a horrible coach named Bill Belichick go on to the Patriots and win Super Bowls over there. Hooray. I am a bitter sports fan. Let's not even talk about what happened with he who shall not be named who went to South Beach to um, (coughs) take his talents there. Excuse me. I almost threw up in my mouth a little bit there. I am a sports fan who cares to talk about the things that matter to me. That is the Indians, the Cavs, the Browns, and the Buckeyes. But, of course, I pay attention to national sports, and we discuss that on our show as well. That's why we have The Unhappy Hour every single Friday at 3.30 p.m. Pacific. Sit down, have a drink. It's the end of a long work week, and we can all get together and talk about the unhappy times that we've had as sports fans. We've all had them. We've had ups and downs, but as Cleveland fans, we only have downs. Join us. If you're tired of the other stuff... Take a look at the new American Media.com. You are listening to the Agree to Disagree program on the new American Media.com. <laughs> 